sing praises to God. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Great is the Lord. Greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In the mountain of his holiness. Good morning and welcome to First Metropolitan Baptist Church Sunday Worship Service. As we prepare to celebrate this Thanksgiving holiday, we are so very grateful that you are sharing in worship with us today. Here at First Metropolitan Baptist Church, we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As we hear a word from heaven today from our interim pastor, Rev. Richard Smith, we pray that the message you receive will not only strengthen your faith, but comfort and keep you over the coming days. Please continue following CDC guidelines on social distancing. Wear your mask when necessary. Wash your hands frequently and sanitize often. But most importantly, please pray for each other. Once it is safe to do so, we invite you to come share with us here at First Metropolitan Baptist Church located at 3719 Bel Air Road in Augusta, Georgia to join us for our Sunday worship services. We have Sunday school beginning each Sunday morning at 930 where we do have classes for all ages followed by our worship service that begins at 11 a.m. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us online to share in worship. We do invite you to join us again next week. Please have a wonderful, blessed, and safe Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us today. Let's prepare our hearts to go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we once more and again bow our heads in humility toward you and for your grace and for your mercy. Lord, we come acknowledging that you are the God who is the creator of the ends of the earth. You are the God and the Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we come now acknowledging and, and make it known that you are an awesome God. Your creation speaks of your wonders. Lord, we're just so grateful for who you are and for what you have done and what you continue to do in our lives daily. We just pause now just to say thank you. Lord, we also come realizing, Lord, that you have been good to us and that, Lord, you have given us the person of your Holy Spirit who indwells us, Lord, and who teaches us and leads us into all understanding. And even when we don't know how to pray, your word tells us that your Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Lord, we are duty-bound, Lord, because you have saved us through the precious blood of your son Jesus Christ and redeemed us back to yourself. We are duty bound, Lord, to pray and to intercede for those, Lord, who right now are suffering from illness and those who are right now in hospitals, those who are right now in nursing homes, those who are right now incarcerated, those who are homeless. Lord, we are duty bound, Lord, to pray and to intercede, Lord, on those who 
right now mourning the loss of loved ones. And Lord, that you would comfort them and soothe their hurt and their pain. Lord, we come realizing, Lord, that we have an awesome responsibility. Lord, to pray because your word teaches us, Lord, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So, Lord, we come now praying, Lord, that you'll send forth workers into the vineyard, Lord, to help to redeem these times in which we live, to reach out and to share the gospel message, Lord, with those who need to hear your word. Lord, help us, Lord, to be able uh, to love them and to um, let our light so shine. They may see our good works and glorify you, our Father in heaven. And Lord, we ask that you continue to touch and strengthen, Lord. We know that uh, there is a shortage of nurses. Lord, we pray for nurses, that you will just strengthen them. And that, Lord, you will just uh, strengthen all who are working in hospitals and who are still holding on. And, Lord, you renew their strength, especially those who are believers in Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we continue to pray, Lord, you will strengthen those who have been touched by COVID-19. Lord, we continue to pray for healing. Lord, we continue to pray, Lord, that uh, this virus will be eradicated, Lord. And, Lord, we'll be able to assemble in your house together to worship your name corporately here. Lord, we pray for churches all over who have been affected by this pandemic. Continue to strengthen, Lord, that believers will hold on to their faith in Jesus and hold on to your promises, Lord, that you'll never leave us, that you'll never forsake us. Lord, we ask that you continue to strengthen and bless believers worldwide. Lord, we always want to pray for our nation and pray for the leaders of this nation. Lord, your will will be done. We continue to strengthen those who serve in this nation, Lord, in the armed forces. Lord, cover them and strengthen them. Bless them. Bless their families. And Lord, we continue to pray that you'll strengthen this fellowship. Bless each and every member, whatever need they may stand, they, they may have, Lord, that you'll just touch and move in their situation. Now, Lord, I pray that you allow me to preach your gospel. The word will go forth. Knowing that, Lord, when your word goes forth, it will not return void. We give you praise. We give you honor. We ask all these things in the mighty and righteous name of your dear son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Believe us, say amen. morning, let's turn our attention to the epistle penned by the Apostle Paul, Ephesians, the first chapter, and we'll read the first 14 verses. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at, at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having, predestined, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of, a, the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he have purpose in himself, 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of the time of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have, have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after ye, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. I want to share a word this morning. A reason to be thankful. A reason to be thankful. We start out in this message and I won't be the Lord's will to spend a little time in this book of Ephesians. and uh, We learn from Paul's salutation to the church, we can learn some things from it. First, we see that he recognizes his position as an apostle, that it comes by the will of God. And so for us, we should understand that Whatever positions or titles or assignments we are given or obtain, they are only available through the will of God. Notice how Paul greets the church at Ephesus. He says, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He desires grace and peace for them, not hostility, not uh, to be volatile, but he seems to have a desire for peace for his brothers and sisters. This, is, this should be the attitude that we have toward our brothers and sisters of the faith. Uh, this attitude should guide our thinking and our prayers and our action. This attitude and this mindset which Paul, Paul uh, is pinning in uh, the opening of his letter to the, to the Ephesians. Even in his epistles in which he had to be a little rough with the people, he would always open with this type of salutation, exhibiting the same sort of attitude, his, his desire for their good and never for their harm. This is the attitude uh, which should carry, we should carry for our brothers and sisters today. Even uh, when we have to correct, it should be done from a place of love and with their best interests and their good in mind. So even we, we must be tough or rough, it should be done with a desire to help others grow spiritually. And this was the attitude which Paul exhibited to the Ephesians. There's nothing worse than discouraging someone in their spiritual walk. And so Paul is here preparing to give the church some spiritual instruction and some guidance. And he makes it clear that he is writing for the good of the people. In verse 3, uh, he pivots into informing the church of the benefits of faith in the Lord. He detailed their position, or better yet, the blessings afforded to them because of their relationship with the Lord. And he gave some reasons, I believe, that we ought to be thankful. Many look forward to this time of the year. And some uh, have various reasons for why they look forward to it. Some they're excited because family is able to gather and uh, able to share uh, 
big meal together. Um, it's an opportunity, it's a start to this uh, festive season, season of Christmas, and it's a beautiful time of the year where we see the leaves changing colors and the beauty of nature which God has blessed us to be able to observe. And, and it's just a beautiful time of the year. And many are thankful and many look forward to, um, unfortunately, this time. And, you know, a lot of people look forward more to Black Friday and other things. But I want to share this morning uh, some reasons why from this first chapter of Ephesians, we ought to be thankful to God during this season. And the first point is we've been chosen by God. We've been chosen by God. We look at verse 4. Paul lets the, lets the church know that, that uh, they've been chosen. And so we've been chosen by God even before he formed this world. That lets us know how valuable we are to the Lord. We are very valuable. He looks at us as valuable in that he chose us before creating the world. In God's sight, you and I are more important than anything else in this world. Jesus died for us, not for this world, not for the things that are in the world. Not for the things the world has to offer, but he died for you and he died for me to redeem us. He died that we might be holy and blameless as he took all of our sins to the cross at Calvary and he washed them away through his own precious blood. And so Paul tells us that we were chosen in him we might be holy and blameless before him in love. Verse 5, he further drives that point home as he writes that we were predestined unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ unto himself. God knew the manner by which we would become his children even before he created man. He knew that man would fall into sin and, to, and into despair. And so Paul tells us even before he created us, he had a plan to redeem us. He, he, he knew us and he knew that man would fall. But we were chosen by God even before he formed this world. That's something to be thankful for, that God thought enough of you and thought enough of me even before he created this world. That he would adopt us as his own precious children. Next thing we should be thankful for is we should be thankful for God's grace toward us. In verse 6, tells us that God is to be praised for his grace toward us. We, we did nothing to earn God's grace. Verse 7 elaborates on that point made in verse 6. It is through the blood of Jesus that we have been redeemed from all of our sins. It's, our, it's the grace of God by which or through which we have been forgiven, by which we have a right now to eternal life. Nothing that we did, nothing that you did, nothing that I did to earn it. And as we get further into chapter 2, Paul is going to talk about that wonderful grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. But in our text, Paul is, is getting us warmed up and he's getting us I hope, excited about why we ought to be thankful. Why we ought to be thankful. Verse, verse uh, 8 and verse 9, Paul tells us that God poured out all wisdom abundantly upon 
us and that he revealed to us his will. Paul described this as a mystery, God's will as a mystery. There are others who try to figure things out. They, they, they study everything and try to figure out how this earth and how everything came to be and how man came to be. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to figure it out, but the problem is every time they try to figure it out, they have to change some things, change the age of the earth and change all of so the things around so that they'll fit. But we don't have to worry about that. You and I, we ought to be thankful that, 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 that God found us and, that, and that, that he chose us. Not only did he choose us, but then through his love, he, he gave us his Holy Spirit to indwell us. And now he's able to, to, to give you and to give me understanding as we study his word. We understand that it was through Christ. That the world was formed. And understanding that there was nothing created. That he didn't have a hand in creating as he was with the Father. And so this leads to my last point. As we prepare for Thanksgiving. The main reason we ought to be thankful as believers can be found. Verses 10 through 14. In this portion of the scripture, Paul makes it clear to us that Jesus himself will gather all things, look at verse 10, in the fullness of time, the dispensation, dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather in one all things in Christ. And so for you and for me, this is something to be thankful for that there's a coming day when everything that's in heaven, the angels in heaven and all who have lived on earth and have given their life to Christ and have accepted his death on the cross for remission of their sins will one day be able to share together that wonderful day where he will gather all things in one to himself. This is what I love about it. He, he talked about in verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You've been sealed to that time when Jesus shall come again. You've been sealed through the Holy Spirit of promise. That's something to be thankful for, that, that out of all I have to deal with on a daily basis, somebody ought to say, ought to, you ought to be shouting to God, glory, hallelujah. Out of all the stuff that we have to deal with in this life, when it's all said and done, Jesus will gather us together to himself. That's something to be thankful for, not only do you, are you saved? Will you be saved? But you ought to know that you're already saved. That's what Paul is telling us right here. It's not in some time by and by, but as soon as you accept that Jesus Christ, and this is a message for somebody who doesn't know him, you can have a guarantee right now. If you accept Jesus Christ, Paul says in here, in verse 13, after that ye believe, Ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He put his own seal on you and on me and on all who will believe. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Until he comes again, we already guarantee his seal is on you, his seal is on me. That's something to be thankful for. That's something that we can celebrate and be thankful for. I'm thankful for everything that God has given me. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my, for my parents. I'm thankful for my, my wife. I'm thankful for my daughter. I'm thankful for my church family. I'm thankful for every piece of bread that I eat 
But most of all, I'm thankful that God chose me even before he created this earth. I'm thankful that he, there's grace toward me even though I was yet a sinner. He died for me, and you ought to be glad to know that he died for you, a reason to be thankful. And finally, a reason to be thankful, you've been sealed once you start believing in him. You've been sealed. And because he put his seal on you, there's no devil in hell who can pull you out of his hand. Because he sealed you, there's no racism that can pull you out of God's hand because he sealed you. There are no circumstances that can pull you out of his hand. We ought to shout glory, hallelujah, and we ought to celebrate Thanksgiving knowing that, yes, I have something to be thankful for. And that one of these days, yes, we've been living in a miserable 2020. And yes, 2021 has not gotten back to normal, but I can have one thing that I say has never changed. And that's God's love for me and his love for you. And that seal he placed on you and that seal he placed on me when we first believed. And I don't know what the future will hold. I don't make predictions. But one thing I can say, and I can say with confidence, if you accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, his grace will redeem you. You accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. He'll put his seal on you. And he'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And regardless of what happened during these evil days, there's nothing that can change the fact that you've been accepted in his family, you've been adopted as a child of God. When you bow your head, everlasting God, we thank you for all that you do, all that you've done. In this coming week, many will gather together to eat. Many will stuff themselves. Many will spend time laughing and celebrating with family. Lord, it's my prayer that as they celebrate together, that, Lord, they'll be mindful of the greatest thing we have to celebrate. And that is the fact that we've been given the gift of eternal life. And that, Lord, you've placed your seal on us, guaranteed us in the person of your Holy Spirit, which indwells everyone who believes. And Lord, I pray right now that you will just touch and strengthen even someone right now who may uh, be going through this Thanksgiving and it may be a lonely time for them. Lord, I ask that you will comfort them by reminding them, Lord, that there is a coming day when if they accept you, they'll never have to be lonely again. And that, Lord, that you can... They can feel your presence and that, Lord, they can know that because they believe that they can be sealed with a promise that they'll have eternal life in that place where you sent your son and he came down and died and then he rose again and he told the disciples that he's going away to prepare a man. That, Lord, there is a coming day, Lord, when we'll be able to live with you eternally. We won't have to worry about the tears of this life, the struggles of this life, the frustrations of this life. Help someone right now to hold on by faith and to find joy in you and to find, be able to be thankful for you. And for the eternal life that you have promised to all who would yet, yet believe. Strengthen us and cover us throughout this Thanksgiving season. And Lord, as we go through these holidays, help us to be mindful, Lord, to keep you first. And help us to be grateful for all that you have done and all that you will do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we give thanks.
Son of God, we're thankful for all of your many blessings. Continue to cover and strengthen each person of First Metropolitan, each family, each member, and continue to strengthen and pour out your blessing upon the body of Christ. Now unto him who is able to present each of us faultless before his Father's throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory, majesty, and dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Amen.